Hi everyone, so for my video today, it's going to be a brush in focus kind of a video and I'm going to be talking about two brushes uh, for us today and it's actually these brushes from Chikahodo, the MKUM brush and the MKSK brush. Now um, I find it fitting to talk about these two brushes right now because um, the plum blossoms are already blooming in Japan as we speak and soon enough the cherry blossoms are going to start flowering as well. So it's, you know, fitting for the season and um, also when I everything I know that the Mackey brushes from Chikahodo are beloved in the like you know Fuda community and I have been often asked questions like you know comparing these two brushes at the moment because these are the only Mackey brushes that are currently in production so a lot of the Mackey brushes have been uh, retired already but um, like you know I do hope that Chikahodo is gonna develop another brush maybe because like, you know, if you're going to see the pattern once a Mackey brush is retired, another one comes along. So hopefully there will be like, you know, more Mackey brushes to come because they're absolutely beautiful. I do believe that the Mackey brushes from Chikahodo are stunning, super beautiful. So um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to flip my camera over and very briefly, very briefly, I'm going to talk about these two brushes in detail. And the reason why it's just going to be very brief is because I have already talked about these brushes individually and also comparatively in other videos before so if you're interested to see that I'm gonna put a link down in the description box for that okay so let's talk about these two of course from the get-go you guys can see that the main difference of these two brushes are actually the designs on the handle we have the plum design here on this matte ferrule while here on the Chikahodo MKSK we have the cherry blossom with a glossy handle and if we just put them here side by side like this we can see that they are very similar to each other. They're like sisters, but I don't know, two siblings apart. Now, before I continue, I would like to say that both of these brushes actually came with their own gold boxes. So it's actually that special because not a lot of the Mackey brushes from Chikahodo, especially the earlier ones, didn't come with a gold box like that. So I'm just going to zoom in a little bit on the brush head here because that's where we will see the difference of these brushes so the mkum here has a flat and round brush head design while the mksk here also has a flat and round brush head design but it flares out a little bit here especially as it nears the tips of the bristles so that's how similar but different they are now if we just put them in this position we can also see the difference in the brush head design where in the mkum here is rounder like more ovoid while this one the MKSK is more like you know oval and we can see that both of them are quite like you know airy both brushes are actually very very soft can you see that just see the snap back of that but I do have to say that the MKSK here has a much more airier brush head than the MKUM Okay, so I'm zooming out and I'm going to talk about the strength of the core of the brush head. So the MKUM here has a nice bounce, as you guys can see here. And if I'm just pressing it here, we can see that there's some resistance from the tips of the bristles here, especially here in the middle part of the brush head. So there's actually some strength into the core of the belly of this brush head. So can you see that? And if I just press it, it doesn't really splay out much. I can feel some resistance and I'm sure you guys can see the resistance as I'm pressing the brush head into the palms of my hand. So let me just like, you know, um, show you the way that this plays here on my face, putting some pressure, substantial pressure. And um, there's some resistance that I can feel. So, which is still remarkable to me because squirrel brushes, especially gray squirrel, are one of the softest um, hairs that you can use on a makeup brush. So, um, at least that's very interesting. And that, um, in just doing that activity alone, um, this gives us an idea that you can actually use this for targeted um, application of color. And you can have a much more, like, you know, precise application of color, but still very, very soft. 
Now for the MKSK here, if I just tap it here onto my palm, we can see the balance again. We can also see the resistance, but it's much more softer. As you guys can see, and if I press it, we can see that it plays out more. And let me just show you here on my face. So if I just press it further, it actually presses wider. And I'm just you know, adding the same pressure that I used with the MKUM brush. And this just enables you to apply and diffuse color in a much more wider sense. So when you press it, it the brush head almost widens the way that a rounded um, brush head actually blooms out. But this one has a much more oval kind of a application so i think it's also very fitting um this brush head design right now because a lot of people on like you know instagram or like you know on youtube and i don't have tiktok but i do see some videos that get into um, instagram wherein they actually like to apply their blushes in a much more like you know angular manner not in a round manner so this brush is going to be actually perfect for that so those are the main comparisons that i can think of that like you know i can compare the mksk to the mkum so um if you are someone who has very very sensitive skin having squirrel brushes at your disposal is going to be very important because they will actually not aggravate um, the texture in your skin and it's not going to make your skin look red as well because like you know i have used some psycho hole brushes and there are amazing psycho hole brushes in the market today which can be very useful for people who have sensitive skin but you know sometimes when you are working with someone who over exfoliates their skin or like you know who's just undergoing skin treatments sometimes the psycho hole brushes for their softness um, i can see that it's actually very strong that it's actually able to peel the skin off of the um, top layer of the face so um, when i know that somebody is actually undergoing some treatment or is just over exfoliating their skin i revert to squirrel brushes uh, when i'm doing their makeup and of course if you're someone who prefers a light dusting of color on the face squirrel makeup brushes are going to be perfect for you especially if you have like you know, very strong colors that you don't want to use now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to apply some um, foundation and um, after that I'm going to proceed and apply powder using these brushes so hang around with me okay Okay, so that's my foundation and my concealer down and now let's proceed to powder application now first things first setting powders so I actually do love using the MKSK brush for this especially when I only want to apply a very light dusting of um, setting powder on the face and I'm actually also very careful when I am using this because this actually has a tendency of picking up a ton of product so I'm just gonna tap off some of the product here at the cap and i'm just going to apply it lightly on my face and i'm gonna do this in a buffing manner because that's what like you know this brush head reminds me of and it actually does remind me also of the brush head design of the sonya g jumbo bronzer wherein they have this very similar kind of a brush head shape as you guys can see here so i'm just like you know using this in a way that i would use like a bronzer brush because i actually don't want to apply a ton of powder and to mattify the foundation so that's what i like using it for so we still have like you know this very nice shine and sheen from the foundation and from my skincare and from my you know the natural oils from my skin peeking through and i like using this brush particularly for that now if i want to have a much more like you know matter um powder application on the face i'm going to use the mkum brush because the brush head design here is actually more traditional it's flat it's rounded and it's like you know paddle like design and even if this is a um, squirrel brush head if you press this on like you know um, translucent powder it will pick up a ton of products so um, it's either you um, remove some of the excess here on the cap or you just tap it here on your hand and you 
apply this in a pressing manner on the face. This will give you a much more fuller coverage of the translucent powder and it's going to give you a much more like you know matter kind of a finish on the skin and just like that I think you can see the difference on how these brushes apply powder. So one you still see this very nice like you know dewy effect while the other one is more like you know matte. So the great thing about square brushes is that um, because of their very soft nature it will not disturb the foundation or the concealer application that you applied before you applied the powder. But one thing though that um, I have to tell you guys is that if you have oily skin try not to use squirrel brushes because they will actually like you know suck in all of the like you know oils and the moisture from your skin or even like you know from the foundation that you are using so um, in that sense um, squirrel brushes actually um, they're a little bit more difficult to maintain because um, you would need to wash them frequently than in comparison to that of like you know a psycho hole. Um, powder brush, okay, but if you have sensitive skin, this is the type of brush head that you have to purchase for yourself All right, so this is loose powder application using the MKUM and the MKSK now powder foundations are actually quite difficult to work with and I have found over the years that if I use the wrong brush head I will pick up too much of the product and it's gonna apply too strongly on the face and it's gonna look cakey um, like you know almost instantly so I actually like using the MKUM brush for this product so this is the MAC Studio Fix and the reason why is because of the brush head like you know again it's made of squirrel hair so it's actually very soft and it will not pick up a ton of the product so when you apply it on your skin you actually have a very nice like you know layer of this and it's also enough to give you coverage without like you know overdoing it then again um, I'm only doing this because I have oily skin and if you need more coverage you actually need a much more denser and a thicker brush but if you just want to like you know mattify your face further using this brush in tandem with a powder foundation can really help you to achieve this very nice you know matte look on your face not necessarily dry because it doesn't actually like you know remove the natural shine and sheen from your skin and that's actually very important and when I am uh, using this brush and this product together I am just applying it like you know in one direction in a patting motion because if you are gonna use this in a buffing motion um, I mean it's okay but like you know if you have texture that's a big no-no so um, that will just like you know develop more texture on the skin so applying it in like you know this manner in one direction and sometimes in smaller uh, targeted areas where you actually need it is all you need to do okay and just like that very very simple very easy and you have this very nice even coverage on the skin not too matte just perfect and even not cakey so that's very very important especially if you are someone who has dry skin or of a certain age you don't want to look too dry okay now for finishing powders I actually do love using my Maki brushes for finishing powders and in particular I actually like using the MKSK brush with my Guerlain Meteorite so this is in the color Dore and um, Although, like you know, intuitively it's the wrong brush to use because the pearls of the Guerlain Meteorites here are just like you know way too hard to um, to be broken down by a squirrel brush head. But actually, it's actually able to pick up some product, and um, I only use this when I want to add a very light hint of the finishing powder on the face. Like you know, I don't necessarily want to change the color of my foundation or to add like you know too much warmth I would use this because it just adds a very delicate hint of color on the face I think you guys can see it already I mean pardon the change in lighting because it's again very cloudy but you guys can see that it's actually adding a very delicate and gentle color on the face so the good thing with like you know having squirrel brush heads is that it actually helps you to build the intensity of the color to the degree that you want and just like that 
like you know if you found that you've overdone applying your powder foundation and you just want to have a hint of radiance but not too much and you don't want to use any like you know highlighting powders things like that and you just want to use a very light wash of finishing powder using this brush with your favorite finishing powder can just give life back into your matte skin now i've said it before like you know this type of a brush head design is quite um a novel uh, well to me anyway because i have noticed this type of a brush head design like you know popping up like you know with the uh, jumbo bronzer or like you know with the uh, mama inoki or like you know with some eyeshadow brushes from chikahodo like let's say where is that from the keramiki set so if you just put them side by side you see that they're almost the same but their brush heads are just different in size so it's like you know flat and paddle like but it's not round so it flares out a bit and i find that it's actually very fitting to use this kind of a brush for most of the palettes that have been coming out recently so like for example if you are someone who likes to have a lot of palettes in your collection like for example this Viseart palette here having this kind of a brush head here really fits into the pan here and um, I think I have said it before that this type of brush head enables you to apply a much more targeted um, application of color on the face and blend it out at the same time so I'm just tapping it on my cheekbones here and I'm just letting the brush do its job of applying a very nice diffused color on my cheeks. So let's diffuse it further. So this is a um, bronzer color from the Plum and Bronze palette of um, Viseart. So you're adding a very nice hint of warmth on the face, which is actually very lovely. Now, this is also one of the main attractions that I have with this brush head is because I have a lot of these, you know, these palettes from Viseart. And for example, I have this, like, you know, contouring and highlighting palette. And if I am in a rush, but I just want to have, like, you know, to add a hint of um, contouring into the cheeks, I would just, like, you know, tap this brush head here on the lightest color. And use this along the cheekbone and this will already add a very nice like you know hint of contouring there and just like that it's very easy it's going to add the shadow that I need just to make my cheekbones pop now if I want to make it pop some more I'm gonna go into the deepest shade here maybe tap it twice and then tap it along my cheekbones here and blend it upwards now I'm just concentrating the brush head here on this part of my cheeks, mainly because um, if I bring it downward even further, my cheeks are actually very round. So if I bring it down here, it's just not going to be very flattering because it's going to make the highlights in my under eye pop. So I don't want that. So I'm just adding a very light hint of this contouring color here, like, you know, near where my ear and my cheekbones meet. And I'm just tapping it and just like that it's giving a very nice hint of like you know shadow into the area and it's very nice and very diffused it doesn't look muddy at all so that's the type of contouring that I actually like to do on myself or on clients like you know very light very delicate because I don't want the contouring to show um, because usually what you guys don't realize is that when you are moving and the light hits you in a different way um, like you know adding a hint only a very light hint and very diffuse amount of contouring color can really help your cheekbones come out you don't really have to go to town with it because most of the time it's going to look very very muddy and we don't like a muddy contouring look on the face okay now for blush i'm just going to remove the excess contour color from the brush head of the mksk um, brush now I have also seen that there is this like you know trend wherein you apply a very stripy kind of a blush application on the cheeks and I find that I also like using the MKSK too for that now um, let me pick up this very nice delicate pink color here now pardon the two missing pans from this Viseart palette I had to remove them because they had molds growing in them so um, I had to quickly remove it before it contaminates the other colors because it's going to be such a waste of product if you know what I mean and it's not that 
um, you know, cheap. It's not, e it's not really cheap. But anyway, this is another discussion for another time. So um, I have some of the color loaded here at the very tips of the bristles of the MKSK. And I'm just going to pat it here on my cheekbones right on top on the area where I applied the contour colors and I'm just going to be patting it and now I'm going to be brushing it and I'm actually just using one motion okay because I'm applying the color here in the highest points of my cheekbones and I'm just lightly pressing it and flicking it here near this area and I'm just going to buff it a little bit mixing it into the contour colors just so that we have a seamless application of color and we have this very nice like, you know diffused um, intermixing of the colors on the face and look at that look how diffuse the colors apply like you know you still have the intensity but it has a very nice delicate and well blended application on the cheeks and i love this brush for that look at that amazing color right very beautiful nice blending now you can also use the mkum for blush application i have shown you guys that before but for this video i would like to show you guys that i also love using the mkum for loose blush application so this is my tonoko powder from mitsuyoshi and this is what actually geishas use to add that pinky hue into their white you know foundation base and i have a little bit of the powder here on the cap and I'm just pressing the brush head into the cap here and as you guys can see it picks up a good amount of product so I'm just gonna remove a little bit of the excess here at the back of my hand and I'm gonna apply it here on top of my cheekbones okay I'm picking up some more and just you know gradually building the color now, if you are someone who's very impatient with your makeup applications, quill brushes is not a good idea for you because you would really need to build the intensity that you want. But then again, if you are someone like me who likes to have this like, you know, very delicate wash of color, well blended, again, quill brushes are the go-to brushes. All right, so this is uh, like, you know, three layers of the Tonoko powder from Mitsuyoshi applied on my face using the MKUM brush. And we have this very nice delicate pop of color on the cheeks as well. Now, my philosophy with brushes is that you can use it in any way that you want. And I even use the MKUM for highlighting powders. Now, I'm going to apply some of that here on the highest points of my cheeks and maybe here into my brow area and as you guys can see we have this very nice pop of color so there is a strength into the belly of this brush that can actually pick up like you know big gelée formulas um it's going to be a challenge if it's going to be hard pressed kind of like um highlighting powders but big gelée formulas i don't have any problems with um the mkum brush but then again like you know all you have to you just have to remember that you have to build to the intensity and you just have to take your time um when you want to have a much more like you know pop of color into the face so yeah i think that's my vlog for today i hope that you guys enjoyed me showing you how i use my mksk and my mkum brush now um i know they're quite expensive and um as i said in previous videos if you are someone who's starting your like you know food collection at least having these brushes from chikohodo is like you know um a nice way to start and it like you know it becomes a nice vantage point on how it is to actually have like you know good quality makeup brushes that are handmade in japan now i bought this off of food beauty which is my retailer of choice and if you are interested to know i'm going to put a link down into the description box to these so that you can go and check it out for yourself at your convenience okay so yeah if you have any more questions about these two maki brushes from chikohodo please leave them down in the comments box and let's have a conversation about it and if you happen to have any of these two brushes from Chikodo, please let me know how you like to use it and what are your most favorite products to use it with, okay? Now, oh, by the way, I forgot to mention that these blushes are matte. This bronzer is matte. And, of course, this contouring products from um, Viseart are also matte. So, 
I like using this with a lot of my matte products for the face, okay? So anyway, that's it for me today. I'm going to let you guys go now. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for being here, and I hope that you're having a good day wherever you are. Bye!